All right, YouTube, David Harry here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and edit HDR game capture footage within DaVinci Resolve. Then I will also show you how to export the same footage to HDR from Resolve into a file format which will allow you to upload it to YouTube. After which point, once YouTube has processed the file, it will give you back a HDR version and also an SDR version. Now in this particular example, I'm going to be using footage captured from an Xbox Series X, which was obviously set to HDR, and the capture device that I've used is the Elgato 4K60 Pro Mark II, which was also set to record HDR. Now the basis of this particular workflow is based on HDR 10PQ. So what I do here is going to be very much similar or maybe exactly the same for most other capture devices and such. You can most certainly try this out on other capture devices and what have you. But like I say, this right now is set very specifically for the Xbox Series X and also the Elgato 4K 60 Pro Mark II. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just give you an idea of the source footage that I've got here. So this is the clip that I've recorded on the Elgato. I'm just going to put this into media info so we can see some of the basic information to do with the file. So as we can see here, HEVC, and then if we scroll down a bit more, it's going to show us the frame rates and also resolution and things like that. But most importantly, what we're going to see here, aside from the fact that it's 420 chroma subsampled at 10 bits, which is very important, it is also BT 2020 and PQ. So like I say, effectively, this is just the most simplest of HDR formats, which is HDR 10. So now what I'm going to do is get into setting up resolve now as best as possible i will try not to kind of jump cut through anything here so the video may be long however i will be trying to explain as much as possible there are certain things i can't go into great detail about this is going to be more of how to set the settings and get the result that you need so what i'm going to do here is set up resolve so i will once this is launched i will then set up a project okay so i'm going to set up new project here now what I'm going to do is just call this, let's see, HDR export. I'll call this export, although it is obviously an edit exercise as well. It's just a name for me to understand what it is amongst my projects. So let me create that project. Now the first thing that we're going to do is go to project settings down here in Resolve. In fact, let me just go full screen with Resolve. So what I'm going to do here is go to project setup. Now the first thing that we need to do is match the project timeline to the resolution and frame rate of the source footage. In this instance I've captured UHD 4K at 59.94 frames per second. So I will set up accordingly. So resolution, Ultra HD or 4K UHD. And then I will set my timeline frame rate to 59.94. So my resolution and frame rate there are perfectly matching the source footage. Now what I'm going to do is go to color management. Now from in here, just leave it on DaVinci YRGB. Now timeline color space, if we click on here, now if we scroll down and we will see a bunch of settings here to do with Rec 2020. So what I'm gonna do here is select Rec 2020 ST2084 1000 nits. Now the reason for selecting this is because this will match the type of footage recorded. You will generally be editing 1000 nit footage with this same rec standard and ST2084 as well. Also at this point, we have an option here to select enable HDR 10 plus. It is not necessary. And the reason why is because this is basic HDR 10. So this has effectively got static metadata. If this were HDR 10 plus compliant captures, then yes, we would select that. It is not necessary for this particular exercise. Also, we have no interest in Dolby Vision here because once again, it is not Dolby Vision encoded. So what we're gonna do is just click save there. So that is now our setup for the project and the relevant information that's required for it to react in the way that we need it to. For it to be HDR PQ or HDR 10, which then conforms with the source footage. 
So now what I'm going to do is go and try and find that footage in that big mess on my desktop. <laughs> right, hold on. So here we go. It is, actually there it is, how to edit <laughs> HDR in Resolve. Okay, so I'm going to select this file here. So I'll open the file. Now what I'm going to do is just go to the edit page and drop it in. Now at this point, this is the file now in the timeline ready for editing. Now what you're going to notice here is that is going to look a little bit milky looking. This is exactly what HDR footage looks like when it is not being decoded either to a timeline or to a screen with the relevant LUT that's required to transfer it to say Rec 709 which is what I'm viewing in right now. Now don't forget we are not doing any grading here. So it is not important to have the playback look correct for HDR. If however, this was a different type of source footage where you were doing grade and then you, then you would definitely have to preview in HDR as well. There's just no need to do it right now because we are not altering color information. So aside from the fact that this does look a little milky, there's nothing wrong with it. You can, however, go to your color management settings here, and you can you can then select an appropriate LUT there, which will just decode in the timeline for you without affecting the output. Once again, it is not necessary because we are not touching the color. We are basically editing a you know piece of footage or a file. Now, what I'm going to do here is just affect a very simple edit. And by very simple edit, I just mean I'm going to cut this file up in just a few small places, rearrange a couple of these cuts. And this is just to affect a very simple edit. And don't forget, you know, you might want to say chop out, you know, any kind of like mid scenes out of your gameplay and stuff like that. Or you may want to kind of like cut out any respawn things and stuff like that and just get straight to action. So basically, this is effectively what I'm doing right now. So what I'm going to do is just chop things about and move them about a bit. This is obviously massively random right now, but like I say, it is just to affect a very simple edit. So there we go, we've now got an edit there. Now I'm just gonna IO mark that out. So what I'm gonna do is go to the start of the timeline there. I've clicked I on the keyboard to mark the in point. And then I come to the end here and click O on the keyboard. That marks the out point. That's important because what this is going to tell Resolve to do is just to export everything that it sees between the in point and the out point. Also at this point, you can then add, say, titling and stuff like that. And because of the way that the project is set up, Resolve will account for any simple titling like, you know, as HDR and stuff like that. So if you want to go ahead and type in like name tags and stuff like that, you can do that. However, if you're importing, say, external, say, graphics and stuff, you have to make sure that they were HDR 10 compliant or use a relevant decoder LUT within Resolve in order to bring that into the correct color space and stuff and gamma settings and what have you. But right now, most game stuff is probably likely to just be name tagged and stuff like that with edits. So if you want to, like I said, at this point, just use the title editor and do some simple name tagging and what have you. But right now, this particular project is now set up to be exported to HDR. So what I'm gonna do now is go to the export page. Now, what we wanna do here is click on custom. Now, maybe the first thing to do actually is to go and select source destinations and stuff like that, or destinations where we're gonna send stuff. So I'm going to put that back in the same folder where the master was. So let me select that as the folder, and I'm just gonna call this HDR, let's see, output, if I can spell correctly. Okay, so that's the start off. Now what we wanna do from this point is select MP4 as a format. There we go. Then select H.265 as the, as the codec. Also as well, depending upon what version of Resolve you're on, whether it's on PC, Mac, or Linux, or whatever, if you've got the option to use a hardware accelerator if available, then you might as well select that because at this point, you would get like a faster export and stuff if you use the hardware assisted one. If however, you wanna use the software variant, that's entirely up to you. Now, as far as resolution and frame rate are concerned, both of those will match the timeline. There is no need to touch them. 
Now, if we come down to quality settings here, oh yeah, by the way, export alpha, chapters from markers and stuff, they are not necessary for this particular exercise. Definitely export alpha won't make any difference because we're not using any particular alphas in this particular export. Also as well, chapters from markers is not necessary here because you would do this separately within YouTube. Once you've done like your upload, you would set your chapters if necessary. So again, not necessary for this particular exercise. Now, as far as quality is concerned, you can leave it on automatic if you like. However, I'm going to put this at a 100,000. That's basically 100 megabits per second at this point. Now, just to be clear, I'm on a, a, an M1 Max here, and the way that I'm going to export this will produce a very high quality picture. Um, I've seen some people going on about the encoders within Resolve not being particularly great. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the M1 Max variant is absolutely fantastic when you hit the right bit rates and such. Also as well, limit data every particular like amount of seconds and stuff like that won't be necessary. And things like keyframe optimization and stuff like that will also not be necessary either. Now we've got another set in here, optimize for speed. I'm going to untick that. Now the assumption here, and I've been looking more deeply into this and I still can't find the answer. However, I'm going to surmise when it's ticked on optimize for speed, what it does, it doesn't analyze the footage as deeply and there are certain settings, most specifically probably to do with the B-frame structure, which are kind of like lessened as it were. However, on an M1 Max, it is mega fast. So I untick that and then that will give it its best analysis of the file within the parameters that we have open to us here and definitely creates a fantastic encode. Now, the next thing to do here is to select main 10. Very important. At this point, we don't have to kind of like inject any type of metadata or anything like that, because what's going to happen is the exporter is just going to naturally take the, you know, some of the characteristics from the project and use that as part of the encode, especially now that we are selecting main 10. Has to be main 10 anyway to do this. So there's a lot of things where in other workflows, you may have to set them up kind of more manually. We don't have to do that here. Um, frame reordering, I'm not going to get right into that. Once again, that's something in particular to do with B frames. Just leave it switched on. It has no impact whatsoever with the way YouTube is going to decode anything. And once again, as, as mentioned, keyframes, leave them on automatic. Once again, with a high enough bit rate and stuff, none of these things will come into play as to make any difference whatsoever to the picture quality perce perceptually, visually. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just add that to my render queue. Now, in fact, I don't know how long this timeline is. I'll see this as it goes through. But what we're going to see here is just exactly how quickly this will export from Resolve. So let me just hit render all here. And we'll have a look up here at the frame rates. Now, if we have a look there, 90 frames per second. So once again, this is 4K UHD, effectively 60 frames per second. It's 59.94. But we are exporting faster than real time for this. And that is also using the setting here, which is not optimized for speed. If this was on optimized for speed, that would be in the region of 120 to 140 frames per second thereabouts. It is mega quick. Also as well, one thing that I've found here as well, if I use a simple title, the export is still the same speed. So you can have a simple title and a cuts only timeline and stuff like that, or maybe one or two simple titles actually, and you will still be exporting with these settings in excess of real time. Okay, so as we can see here, that's like three quarters of the way through. The reason why I'm leaving this section here in real time is just so you can see how well Resolve on the M1 Max using the, the hardware on the SOC now for M1 Max and M1 Pro is actually doing. And there we go, look at that, you know, 90 frames per second. We were basically one and a half times real time with that. There will be other videos I will do as well, as far as like encoding is concerned and stuff like that, and just how good it is actually happening on the M1 Maxes and Pros. However, right now we have just exported our master for YouTube. So let me just come out to resolve a second. Now what I'm gonna do here, oh actually I've gone back to Resolve, <laughs> let me come out of Resolve. So what I'm gonna do here is go back to the folder, as we can see, HDR output. Now what I'm going to do here is drag this into Media Info, 
and we are going to clearly see the correct characteristics here for HDR. Now, the thing is, the profile settings may have changed and stuff. That doesn't matter. That will not impact after a point what's going to happen for this file to be recognized as HDR. But the main functions that we can see here to do with the parameters are YUV 420 10-bit and once again BT2020PQ. Now, some people may have noticed here that this has limited color range, whereas if I go back to the master, if we have a look down here, not the master, but the source, if we have a look here, this has got a full color range. Now, just quickly at this point, this is one thing that I can't be absolutely certain on here. However, I've done enough tests to know that it doesn't make any difference. But when you're working with particular files, say typically what you would refer to as YUV or RGB, or more precisely in this instance, full or limited color range, what would happen if it's not decoded properly, you will see a difference in say, the Luma levels and stuff like that, or basic gamma settings. However, despite the fact that both of these files are saying one is full and one is limited, in effect, what happens is whatever decodes the files and to whatever color range it wants to go to, it will account for it at that stage. So I've actually done tests here with the full output and with limited output, and they look exactly the same once YouTube has done its thing and done the encodings. It's the YouTube end actually that will define where the color range actually ends up going to so if you see this little discrepancy here or if you notice that being full and limited don't worry about it the end result is going to be perfect and exactly the same believe me I've done numerous tests to actually prove this to myself before I did this particular tutorial anyways after all of that there will be a link in the description and on the screen right now and at the end of the video which will take you to this actual clip the full clip unedited which has gone through the exact same process that I've done here so just to be clear it is just a long clip that I was using for chopping up although the version that I've put up elsewhere where on YouTube it's not chopped up but it went through the exact same process here for the import and the project setup and then also the export settings that I've used okay then so YouTube if you found this video insightful in any way please give it a thumbs up also if you're into this type of stuff to do with maybe resolve video editing max and just technology in general you may want to consider subscribing to my channel and getting all over that bell notification icon to be notified of similar videos in the future I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.